Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We're back here at one of my special filming spot locations because guess what? We have that granddaddy of the minivan class right here next to me. What is it? This is a 2024 Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle. But before we get into this maximum family hauler with plug-in hybrid technology, let's talk about what's going on here. Flashback 1984, guess what? The movie Back to the Future hadn't been released yet. That wasn't until 1985, but 1984 was a big year because guess what? There was an all new class of vehicles in the auto industry called the minivan. And it was all started by Dodge, the Dodge Caravan, and of course, the Plymouth Voyager. Now, the fascinating thing behind all of this is that Lee Iacocca, the man that once worked for Henry Ford II and came up with the Ford Mustang, the idea for the Ford Mustang is the man that also came up with the idea for this vehicle. If you were around back then, like I was, you would know that really, if you needed a family truckster like Clark Griswold going across the country to Wally World, you would do it in a nine passenger station wagon maybe have some wood grain all over it, but really large, long vehicle. Lee Iacocca and the rest of the team over at Dodge and Plymouth decided to make a big change because SUVs weren't even a thing yet. Now, what's fascinating is, is that Chrysler actually came a year later with the Pacifica. And the fascinating thing is, is that it's the last one standing. Dodge recently got rid of the caravan Plymouth hasn't been a car company for quite some time now, but what I want to find out is if you're looking for the most efficient way to transport your family, do you go, do you suck it up, suck up that pride and go minivan, or do you go with a more modern tried and true way going that large suburban, Chevrolet suburban way of traveling across the country? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this phantom blue, very beautiful color, especially when the sun comes out. Let's go dive into this phantom blue Chrysler Pacifica pinnacle and find out. Right off the bat, the shape. This shape has been consistent with the Pacifica for so many years. And yes, if you look at the original minivans from the 80s, they weren't even close to the thought behind this vehicle when it comes in style when it comes to technology, and wait until I show you the luxury on this thing. Now at the front of the business, you'll see that very traditional Chrysler Pacifica look. You're gonna have full LED lighting, LED projector beam headlights, you have your turn signals, and then you also have your LED, of course, daytime running lamps. Now running our way down, they do this fake vent area, and it's only half of it, so I'm gonna give it half a zonk, but I do like the way they give you LED fog lamps, and just a little bit of silver trim. This trim is important to the pinnacle because that is the top trim, and that's what you get when you see a pinnacle. Now, as we come across that large shape, top open grill, full gloss black, you see that traditional Chrysler badge, forward facing camera, some more of that bright, shiny silver finish. And then as we drop down, you have some body color, and then you have more of the gloss black grill, fully functional, and then body color on the lower lip. Now, if you compare this to a Suburban, Suburban, much larger of a vehicle, especially the frontal area. And remember, this is a plug-in electric hybrid version of the Pacifica Pinnacle, which they don't even offer something like that on a Suburban. Now, as we rise up, low slung hood, very short, very stubby, very traditional style. You look at a Honda Odyssey, which is Honda's minivan. If you look at a Toyota Sienna, very short distance from the front of the vehicle to the windshield, just like on this Pacifica. Now, as we come across the bend, what do we got wheel and tire? Now, when you go top pinnacle trim, these are gonna be your hand polished aluminum wheels. 18 inch wheel, which is kind of interesting because you think they would do 19 or 20. 18 inch wheel, 235 on the width, meaty 60 series sidewall. To be honest with you, I think one of the reasons why they stayed 18 inch is not only to make the ride more comfortable, 
But think about this. You could tap a curb and you're not going to be anywhere near that hand polished aluminum wheel. You're going to hit more the sidewall of the tire, which you won't have all those curbing marks. There's nothing worse. And you know, you, you've heard it. I've heard it in parking lots. When somebody curbs a wheel, it's like running your nails down a chalkboard. It just makes my heart just drop right to my stomach. I love the way it's all body colored. And let me know what you think of the color. Phantom blue really, I don't know, checks off a box for me and it, it looks very modern on this Pacifica. Now, as we go down the side of the vehicle, one thing I forgot to mention is that this is, of course, that plug-in and you are gonna have that power get into the wheels very effectively and very efficiently. You do have power folding mirrors up top with that nice aluminum finish on the pinnacle trim. You have LED turn signals, 360 degree cameras. And what they decided to do was take the silver trim top and bottom. To me, it makes the side of the vehicle look a little extra heavy, just visually, like perspective. But that is one way to separate the pinnacle from the rest of the crowd. You'll notice on the bottom portion, the pinnacle badge. That lets you know that this is the top luxury trim and then you have a little bit more silver finish, which is nice. Now, one of the things that, believe it or not, Chrysler and Dodge and Plymouth were the first to come up with, remember, are those power sliding doors on both sides. So that allows you to have that very easy flexibility. If we open it up, you're just gonna hit the button very smooth finish, and then you're just gonna hit the button again. Voila, nice close. Bloop. I love the way they don't have one of those grotesque looking tracks in the body. They actually hide it very, very well underneath the rear quarter glass. That shows their use of that technology longer than anybody else. Honda, Toyota, doesn't matter. Even the Kia Carnival. Now, as we come around the back end, what do we have going on here? You do have a large wiper. I would normally zonk this, but the problem is they don't give you enough extension on the roof spoilers. So there's really nowhere to put it underneath the rear spoiler, but wiper's not my favorite. But the way that they did the LED lighting, that to me, very, very sharp. That lighting all the way across with the Chrysler badge, of course, Pacifica, and you'll notice that e-hybrid, plug-in electric hybrid technology to help you maximize your mileage and that range, and then super clear at the bottom. Now, one thing I wanna point out before I open up this lift gate, when we look at the storage area a little later in the video, is notice how low the bumper is. Very close to the ground. The ease of getting things in and out of this vehicle compared to Suburban, whether it's junk or whether it's people, it makes you wonder why we even moved away from minivans because it's such a very easy vehicle to be around each and every day. But while we go ahead, let's pop the hood because I'm curious about this e-hybrid. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have a prop on. Now, if you were to go suburban, obviously you have your choices of a diesel, Duramax diesel engine. You obviously have your two V8s. In this pinnacle e-hybrid, this is their optional engine setup because you could go naturally aspirated v6 or what we have is the plug-in electric hybrid v6 so you have a 3.6 liter v6 that's putting out 260 horsepower and is paired with an electric motor it does have an ecvt and it does carry a 12.5 kilowatt lithium ion battery pack now the interesting thing is don't expect any crazy zero to 60 time, zero to 60 in 7.8 seconds. Top speed is governed to 106 miles per hour, but here's where you come out the real winner, MPGs. And that's what this vehicle is about. 33 miles on pure EV range. So think about that. If your kid's school is 10 miles away from your house, and then your workplace is 10 miles away from your kid's school, you can get there without even using a drop of gas. Now, if you convert that, it equals 82 MPGEs combined. And if you're just wondering about the V6, it's 30 in the city, 30 on the highway. The vehicle weighs 5,094 pounds, and you could tow up to 3,600 pounds with this vehicle. So obviously, 
very interesting idea of a setup. Now, if you compare this to the Toyota Sienna, the Sienna automatically becomes a hybrid. Not a plug-in hybrid, but a hybrid. Honda Odyssey just has a naturally aspirated V6. And like I said, if you're, if you're comparing it to the ultimate of SUVs for family truckster hauling, the Suburban, you're definitely not gonna get these MPG numbers on a Suburban. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire this thing up and see it roll. All right, guys, we're inside this Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle E-Hybrid. I know it may sound a little bizarre to compare this to a Suburban, but when I think of ultimate family hauler when it comes to SUVs, that seems to be the one that's the legend. I mean, it's been around since the 1930s, for Pete's sakes. But the Pacifica has been around for a while, too. And I think when it comes to price, this is where... You may not even want to look at a Suburban if you're looking for that ultimate family hauler. Or you could be a business owner that needs to haul a bunch of stuff, maybe displays. You go to different uh, convention centers for different shows and stuff like that. Or maybe you're a rock star and you have a band. But if you're wondering, what is the MSRP of a Suburban? So if we're talking Suburban, we got to go high country because this is the top trim of the Pacifica, so we have to compare apples to apples. Uh, top trim of the Suburban, the high country, that's gonna run you over $100,000. Let that settle in, $100,000 plus. This fully loaded and being an e-hybrid version has an MSRP of $62,000. Let's see how it compares and what you get for the money to the door panels. You'll notice they really elevated the materials. You have all soft touch, you have some nice contrast stitching, and then you have some wood finish. Not my favorite, but I guess it works in here with the veneer on it. Bright silver on the door handle, and then you'll notice that beautiful tan leather interior. Soft material on the armrest. Of course, you have your double Twinkie holder tray in the center. And then you'll notice that Harman Kardon speaker system, it's 20 different speakers in this thing. Super size door pocket to where you could go to Jimmy John's, you could get your full length sub, the large sub with all the fixings and a bottle of Pepsi Clear to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same thing. The stitching, the one zonk I have is I wish they would do the smooth style rather than this orange peel. Not my favorite, and it seems a little dated, but I just wanna point that out. You do have a little bit more wood finish to tie that in, and then as you come in, you have a fully integrated. Know how we're all complaining about screens that are just sort of like stuck on with double-sided tape or bubble gum? The Uconnect 5 system is all integrated nicely into the dash. You got, of course, your navigation, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. We go into vehicle settings. You can see that e-hybrid thing doing its job. And remember, one of the, I think the bummers of this is that it's not all-wheel drive. It's still front-wheel drive, even though it is an e-hybrid. And then you go into controls. We have our surround camera. Look at that, 360 out the back. And then you could change. This thing has more camera angles than Circuit City used to have cameras that they used to sell video cameras at circuit city and then my favorite you ready for this one the fam cam what the <laughs> there's twinkie the kid i don't know how the heck he got in here but he's sitting back there in the third row and what's great is full color as you can see and it's the only camera system where you could see into a baby's carrier that's flipped the other way so normally you have to run the baby seat the other way, depending on the age of the baby. You'll be able to see what the baby's doing at all times with the fam cam. And then we have Twinkie the Kid uh, back there being a pain in my rear end. So hit that. And then the rest is all touchscreen. Of course, you got your full AC controls. That goes without saying. Heated seats, ventilated seats, the whole shabam. 
and then working our way down, guess what? We got real knobs and buttons. So radio controls, of course, you got all your parking assists, AC controls. This nice silver rotary dial is going to control that eCVT. A little bit of gloss black, but you're really not going to touch it. Down below, you, it's a little hard to see, but you have a DVD player, USB-C, USB-A, and then there is a bunch of gloss black, but watch this. Whoop. Open that bad boy up. Wireless charging, and you could get your iPhone 47 Gold Edition that's about the size of a freaking iPad. This is a large charging area. Then they have a plethora of connectivity. USB-Cs, USB-As, an aux jack, and a place for some Tootsie Rolls. Nice little Tootsie Roll cup on the side. You'll notice we have a place for a purse, a purse, a bag, a sack, a satchel. If you're in Idaho, you could buy a five pound bag of potatoes and have them down there. And remember, Idaho is the place for potatoes. Don't come to Florida for potatoes. You're gonna be severely disappointed. Two large cup holders. And when I say large, we're talking about super big gulp large. Here's your Chrysler Pacifica key fob. Actually looks pretty good even to this day. And you could open up both sides of the doors, do remote start. And if you're freaking out, hit the panic button. That's my advice. Napa leather, nice soft Napa leather with the stitching. This reminds me of an old baseball glove I used to have as a kid. Same kind of color, same kind of feel. Open this up, check it out. We have more connectivity, 12 volts. You got a USB-C, USB-A. You actually have about 20 different USB connections in here. That to me is mind blowing. Plus you have enough room, I would say six Beanie Babies. So. If you're trying to keep the Beanie Babies away from the kids because they're going to tear them apart, keep them in here, and then you can sell them on eBay and maybe retire one day. Don't count on that, though. The seats, the Napa leather, the stitching, the quilted stitching, the bolstering, full electric assist for the passenger, of course, full electric assist for the driver, Alcantara. Not that guy that lives down the street from you, Mr. Alcantara. We're talking about... Alcantara microfiber headliner. And are you ready for this one? This is like the launching of a, of a, of a cruise missile. Look at this massive power shade that opens up a panoramic sunroof and glass roof for everybody. And then it's all nice one touch operation. I'm going to make sure it doesn't stop. Look at that. Mom, no hands. Can you believe it? Come on over to the business end. I want to show you behind the leather wrap steering wheel in this Pacifica Pinnacle. All right, guys, business time. Notice how large the door openings are and how far the door opens. This is what I'm talking about, that ease of access. To get into a Suburban, it's a little bit of a pain in the rear end because of how tall the vehicle is. You do get a nice, simple aluminum sill plate down here. It says Pinnacle on it. Plus, you have an umbrella holder. How smart is that? This is why I say this is the ultimate in family truckster. Of course, you have your full power assist. I love the piping. The cushions are perfect for your body support. And the seats are nice and wide, nice and airy in here. Definitely much more comfortable seating than a Suburban. I'm six feet tall. I got plenty of room in here. Steering wheel, nice thick rim, leather all the way around, flat black on the switch gear. The one zonk I have, though, is why don't we have a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel? That to me is a missed opportunity. And then the dash, you have a large seven inch display in the center and you could scroll through a cornucopia of information in that center display. Especially, I like the way they actually give you real deal gauges, which are nice. I mean, a voltmeter. When's the last time you've seen a voltmeter in a car? But nice to have all that instrumentation. Then you have an analog power gauge and fuel gauge over there to give you the other info. The other thing I'm missing in here, being a top trim, no HUD. And if you're wondering what's a HUD, head up display. To me at $62,000, it should be in here. But other than that, nicely arranged. Let's get in the mid row and we're going to see where the Pacifica just beats the heck out of the Suburban. Let's get back there. All right, guys, mid row time. And this is another area, like I said, where you're not going to get this much room in a Suburban whatsoever. Interesting thing to point out is remember, we don't have stow and go mid row seats because this is a hybrid. 
underneath us is the lithium ion battery. But what we do have is that great Napa leather. We got Twinkie the Kid here showing how a little kid would be sitting in the seat. And I'm gonna move him out of the way because when you go Pinnacle, you get these special Napa leather pillows with Alcantara on the back. And I'll put this back behind Twinkie the Kid because he'll complain all day. Another thing that's great is of course you're gonna get Amazon TV, that fire stick television TV where you could transfer videos from home for the kids. Look at this, you got Netflix, YouTube, the whole shabam on the screens and you actually have two screens back here. So if you're thinking, hey, we both have to share, no we don't. Plus you have your aux jack, HDMI, and a USB-C. You could play Guitar Hero back here da -da 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 while you're being driven down the road. To me, that's pretty cool. Pockets, you could put some game controllers down here, maybe your NES game controllers. And this is perfect for, not an iPhone, this is where you're gonna wanna put some blow pops. Man, oh man, I miss blow pops. My favorite flavor was sour apple. Let me know down in the comment section what your favorite flavor was. Cherry, grape, sour apple. In the back here, kind of bland. You do have a nice holder where you could put some Hot Pockets for lunch, or you could put some Pop-Tarts. Either way, perfect space. And then you slide this bad boy open. You got two cup holders, but wait, that's not it. You got more. Nice storage. These are the remotes for the screens that you could use. I would say put a bag of popcorn in here because if the kids are gonna watch a movie, you gotta have popcorn. Just dump it right in there. That makes sense to me. Look, you could pull this out to fit more popcorn. They thought about that. I love movies and I love popcorn. Steven would attest to that. So would Lori. But sitting back here, you just close that up. You got your AC controls only on the passenger side. So this is really where you want to be sitting in the mid row because you have full control to the AC, the AC vents. We even have, I like this. Get some sun shades. You know, it drives me nuts when parents who don't have tinted windows go and get those like pieces of film and just stick it on their windows and it looks like garbage. This is nice because now you don't have to stick that junk all over your windows. But guess what? It's not all happy trails and moonbeams. Move out of the way, Twinkie. Armrests, big zonk. They're too skinny. I. I don't know what arm you're gonna fit on there, on there with these captain's chairs. That, to me, is the big zonk. But of course, the seats, they slide. And if they slide, they recline, and they recline quite a bit. In the Suburban, the seats don't do this. They don't recline this far, I guarantee you. But sitting back here, very comfortable, not even close to the headliner. But let's get into that third row and find out if your passengers are gonna be peasants or are they gonna be the king of the court sitting in the third row of this Pacifica. All right guys, third row time. And once again, even though a Suburban in the third row is pretty comfy, uh, it's definitely way better back here. I'm not even close to the headliner. You got your AC vents. Now on the passenger side, like I said, you got, this is where you wanna sit because you have a USB-C and a USB-A. For some reason they didn't put it on the driver's side here in the third row. So that's a little bit of a zonk. So too bad Twinkie. The kid, you don't get to charge your accessories. But the amount of room, and everybody gets the Napa leather with the piping. So they didn't go cheap on the third row. Sometimes manufacturers just put like two pieces of wood, they get some vinyl, and they wrap it, and that's what they th want the third row to be. Here's a nice little fun feature, watch this. So, see, I can move very easily back here. And what's nice is, is if I tell Twinkie the kid to get out of my way, he's always getting in the way. This is what I'm talking about. So you can see where they have the plastic on the back of the seat. You may think, oh, that's kind of cheap. But the nice thing is if you want to be chilling like a villain in the third row, then you could put your feet up and you're not going to destroy that beautiful Napa leather. But I really don't want to move from this spot. But we got to wrap up the review because I want to go for a drive. So let's get into that cargo area and see who is number one, Suburban or Pacifica. All right, guys, time for that cargo area space. And this is really where the Chrysler Pacifica lays the smack down, believe it or not, 
on the Suburban. One thing to realize, remember, as I'm standing here, look how low the roof line is. So that's gonna be easy to get things off the top of the vehicle if you have the crossbars or maybe a cargo carrier. But to get into the back, it's real simple. You're just gonna hit the button. Nice electric assist. What the? I tell you, this Twinkie the Kid today really wants a lot of attention. Here he is, chilling in the back of the cargo area. He's got that nice Napa leather style pillow. I think uh, Twinkie needs to uh, go back up to where he belongs. Let's see if I could do this. Twinkie the Kid football, yay, touchdown. We're good. So now when you're looking at the back with the third row up and we got Twinkie the Kid out of here, you're looking at a maximum of, believe it or not, 32 cubic feet of space. That's with the third row up. Another thing I wanna point out, like I pointed out earlier, look how low the cargo floor is and the lower bumper. And then the amount of space back here is ridiculous. You open up this door, this is where you have all your charging accessories. I like the way they have that nice and out of the way. You do have your button to close the rear lift back. And then on the passenger side, you'll notice we have our 12 volt, which is nicely placed. Now to put the seats down, it's a little bit of a complicated dance with some tethers, but once you do it a couple times, it's not a big deal. So we're just gonna pull here. Obviously you can see it's a 60-40 split. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to pull the bottom one. And it's weird because you think you're doing it wrong. You're like, why am I flipping it towards me? It's not gonna fit. Voila, same thing here. So we're just gonna pull it down. Look at how flat that floor is. Look at how low that floor is. You fold the middle row down, you could get 141 cubic feet of space. Right here, this is 88 cubic feet of space. So this would be perfect, not only for a family truckster, but think about it. If you have a band and you need to get to different locations and you need to get all your gear in here, the drums, the guitars, the amps, you got tons of room back here, plus, I want Lori to show you what we were finding back here. You do have these little nooks for cup holders and things, which are very nice. And then on the passenger side, you actually have a USB-C and a USB-A, like I pointed out, which is fantastic. Now, if you're complaining about having to remove the rear seats, the reason why is because this is the plug-in version. So if you don't get an e-hybrid, it still has the stow and go seats for the mid-row. Because of the battery, that lithium-ion battery, no stow and go, but what they did was they wanted to give you a little bit more cushion for the pushing, so they actually intensified the seat cushions, made them thicker, so that when you're pushing out of the vehicle or getting in, it's much more comfortable. So that's the, the compromise that they did for you. But since we got the seats down, Twinkie the Kid is behaving. Let's go ahead and let's go for a little drive. You gotta hit the, remember to hit the button here. Nice electric assist. Let's go ahead and see how this pinnacle cruises down the road, especially hypermiling with this Pacifica. All right, guys, we're inside this 2024 Chrysler Pacifica pinnacle. Right away, you're gonna be blown away by just the amazing environment that they have created for you behind the wheel of this minivan. Now, going down the road, it does a great job absorbing all the bumps and the divots and everything in the road. And that's going to be helped with those 65 series 18 inch tires wrapped around those 18 inch wheels. Um, just to give you a little bit more cushion that is going to negate all of that noise and vibration harshness from entering the cabin. But the interesting side of this is having that electric motor but paired with a v6 not paired with an inline four cylinder but everything is so well laid out in here i love the uconnect 5 system no matter what stellantis product we drive the uconnect 5 system has some really nice updates and it's very easy to use of course, you have all that important information nicely displayed smack dab in the center of the dash. And then visibility. I mean, this is another area where compared to a Suburban, visibility 
is mind blowing. Now, where the Suburban really comes out on top, of course, is when it comes to towing. It could tow more than this Pacifica Pinnacle. Also, acceleration, surprisingly, is not very quick in this vehicle. But let's go on throttle. On throttle, here we go. So like I mentioned earlier, zero to 60 in about 7.8 seconds is surprising for a plug-in electric hybrid. But obviously this is not meant to go drag race people at your local, local strip. Uh, this is all about getting the family or whatever you're hauling very safely to its destination. And then of course having a great return on the MPGs. But go into your home screen. We could pull up like our vehicle settings. I could then go to surround cam while we're sitting here at the light, which is wonderful. Resolution could be a little bit better, but still nice to have that easy access. And we're gonna go on throttle again. On throttle, here we go. Little bit of wheel spin. But with the lower center of gravity, uh, especially because of that battery pack, the handling is very predictable and it's very controlled. So even though we don't have all wheel drive, which is a bummer because they really should have made this all wheel drive being a plug-in electric hybrid, you're still gonna get uh, really pleasant handling when it comes to the vehicle overall. And you know, it's really gonna be one of those things that when you're looking at a Suburban, you're gonna have that higher vehicle that uh, is gonna sway because the center of gravity is up higher than in this minivan. But very, very smooth. And it's interesting because when you're driving, you don't really feel the V6 turning on and off. When you're parked in a parking lot and the, and the vehicle is running or on, you could actually feel it when it kicks on, but when you're driving, it actually, you can't tell. But definitely, if you're looking for the highest comfort to haul your family, I don't see how there's really much competition for this vehicle because ease of use, the amount of space, the amount of amenities, I mean, like I said, Chrysler's been doing this since the 1980s. And now for model year 2024, it's crazy to think that this is the only vehicle that Chrysler is selling brand new here in the United States. No more 300, and obviously the 200's been long gone for a while. But you have all your safety features, your lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, all those goodies. And then you have probably one of the best visibility setups in here, especially with these smaller corner windows, allow you to park easier, allow you to know where your bearings are as you're driving around. But let's get on the highway and see how the cruising capability, because remember, we were talking about Clark Griswold going to Wally World at the beginning of this review. Let's pretend that we're going on that family vacation to Wally World. And you got Aunt Edna up on the roof and you got the kids being annoying in the back. But as you can see, just the way the vehicle is so easily manageable, I think just uh, makes you feel at home right away. But the cruising potential, I mean, right now with a full tank of gas, I've used all the EV charge. You still have a 508 mile range. That is phenomenal. Even if you go with a Duramax turbo diesel Suburban, you're still going to outlast that vehicle on the road. But going down the road, this thing is so comfortable. You got the captain chairs for the mid row and then you have that bench for the third row and it's a usable bench, which is phenomenal in today's day and age because every time we get into a third row in a crossover SUV, it's like I have to break my back and fold myself like a sandwich. 
to fit back there. And as you can see, going down the road here on the highway, not the smoothest of roads. Still very smooth. Yeah, you're getting a little bit of vibration, but nothing too crazy. And the suspension is just really, really well dampened all four corners. It's not like a marshmallow, but it definitely has a nice glide to it as you're going down the road. The, the biggest thing, I think the biggest hang up for most people looking at this is gonna be that it's a minivan. And you have your pride and you think that you can't be seen in a minivan. But once you drive one of these, it makes you wonder why more people won't get behind the wheel of these because uh, the way they drive is just very well done. But I'm hoping that this has been a good overall review of how the Chrysler Pacifica e-hybrid is trying to be that ultimate family hauler. We're going to get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, been another great day with this Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle with that plug-in e-hybrid technology. Definitely want to thank everybody at Chrysler for allowing us access to this Presley vehicle. Let me know what you think. Are you willing to just swallow your pride and go with the Pacifica, even though it's a minivan? Or are you going to go more the tried and true route and go the way of the Chevrolet Suburban? Let me know down in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Razor Rides family. Of course, we can't do this without Lori gibbons Rady working that camera like the champion that she is. Show her some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.